Hello everyone, I'm Dennis and I'm working on my own 8-bit stack-based CPU built from the standard logic IC, so it's like 60s or 70s technologies. I know it was a pretty big gap between my videos, mostly caused by the summer and other projects. Join my streams where I have those projects, I don't make video from them. And today I'm going to work on the electrical design of the stack part of the CPU, like the main part of the CPU, the stack. And you are probably wondering right now, but what happened with the ALU? I told you that ALU is not working and then disappeared for like half a year. Well, as for the ALU, I recreated the ALU circuit, one of the ALU data paths using the breadboard and realized that I don't have any error in my design at all. It works perfectly. And then I checked the PCB and realized that I don't have error in my PCB. Everything is done according to my design. That works perfectly on the breadboard. So everything should work. That's made me question like, yeah, and then, then why doesn't it work? And maybe after 15 minutes uh, looking on the board, I realized like, I put one of the ICs incorrect way. This is it. I soldered one of the buffers incorrect way. And that's been the reason why LUB not work. So that's an easy problem and the fix will be pretty easy. Just reassemble it one more time and it will work. However, I decided to redesign the LU PCBs for two reasons. Uh, first of all, I made the mistake putting the connector, the backplane connector, and now it's uh, mounted with an angle. So I decided that I can fix that issue. Plus I realized that a half euro card is too small for me and the next uh, sensible size for me will be 10 centimeters to 10 centimeters because that's the cheapest board size I can acquire. And because of that, I decided I can redesign the boards, fix the backplane connector issue and make the boards a little bit bigger. It's not mandatory for the ALU, but I will probably need it for the stack. As for the stack, the difference between the ALU and the stack is that in the stack I have registers and the stack actually stores values. So that's, this is a stateful model because the ALU being just a sequential logic, but now we store some data in that. And my design supported that, oh, we are not updating the register on the each cycle. So I have a special write enable pin in my design and only when the logic control logic decides that, hey, this register needs to be updated, I allow the update of the register. Another one approach will be to make some loop and control the conduct of the register with the multiplexers. This is how it is usually done using an FPGA, uh, but uh, using the multiplexer means I need a separate IC. And in my case, I need two separate IC because I have only four bit multiplexers. So I decided to go the write enable way. Unfortunately, the flip flops like the Registers with a write enable pin are pretty rare, so and it took some time to pick one, but then I found that uh, 823A registers from the 74XX series uh, that I'm going to use. And they're pretty cheap, they are really available, I can buy them. So yeah, I will start with them. The, the initial layout of the electrical circuit design for the stack is pretty obvious. You just make uh, put all the registers and then you think how to connect them. I have five registers, X, Y, Z and T, plus I have additional X0 register, which is like not part of the stack, but more like a previous X value. And uh, some of those registers, in my case, that's X register and Y register, they are connected directly to the backplane connector because they form the signals for the X out bus and Y out buses. Uh, Plus, I decided to put the output buffers, not that output buffer that's switchable, but constantly connect output buffer, the one that acts at a bus driver, like uh, the one that acts at an amplifier for the bus. So it allows me to increase the fan out value of the bus. They are directly connected to the output of the respective X and Y registers. And this completes maybe two sorts of the external connections. Because additionally, I have the X in bus, which is an input bus going to the X register and it's also present on the back plane. However, the X in bus is also formed, like there are signals on right on the board because the X0 register plus, if I remember correctly, the T register, well, that's been an initial design, the T register are able to write to the X register. Because of that, I have to put a special output buffer to the output of X0 register. And by special, I mean the following. My X in bus is an open drain bus. 
all participants of this bus are only able to short circuit to the ground. So the bus is constantly pulled up to the VCC, to, to logical one using the resistors. And every time you need to transfer one on the bus, you do nothing. Every time you need to transfer zero on the bus, to assert zero on the bus, you just short, short it to the ground. In this way, if there will be several participants on the bus trying to drive it in different directions, nothing will break because you can only short circuit it. Uh, to the ground and uh, the one is constantly generated. So there you are not trying to push and pull the bus. That's why I have the special register. Plus additionally the input of the REX register is switched via the multiplexer because the X register can also be fed from the Y out bus but Y out bus is not an open drain bus and I don't want it to be an open drain bus. So I have a multiplexer that switches between the Y out bus and X in bus. And the X in bus is connected to the X0 register and to the back plate. Speaking of the rest of the register, they are connected the same way. They have a multiplexer in front of them. And in my case, I have two multiplexers because I only have four bit multiplexers. And each register accepts data from the register below it and the register above it. And the multiplexer picks which register will be the source, upper one or lower one. It's completely same for all of the registers. You just put a couple of multiplexers in front of your register connected to the register above and below, and this is it. Roughly at this moment we realized that probably the T register is a little bit different because in my initial design, like not even the design of the electrical, of the logical circuit, but in the design of the instruction set architecture, I thought that T register will be able to feed the X register. And then I dropped that uh, requirement. However, I still have the respective connection in the logical design. Later, I decided to remove it completely, but now I'm going to edit so the T register will be buffered with an open drain buffer and connected to the X. And after putting all those multiplexers and after connecting all those inputs and outputs and the buses, it is a time to connect the control logic. The control logic decides which multiplexer input should be sent to the register, which register should be allowed to store the data and so on and so forth. It consists of mostly a decoder that takes the three bit command and generates eight different signals, control signals. And then I have a tree of mostly OR gates because the idea behind the logic is that for some operations, some registers needs to be enabled, some needs to be disabled. So like for each of those, I just pick up uh, the signals that need to enable it, put it under the OR tree and then send the output to the like multiplexer or write enable and so on and so forth. However, uh, there are two things uh, which are not so obvious here. One of those things is that my stack shares the same opcodes with the ALU. I only have three bits of the opcode, like only three bits of the command, and the fourth bit is a selector between the stack and between the ALU. ALU is stateless, so it just passes those commands, like nothing happens, but the stack may update uh, its own content, so it's stateful. So I need to disable the stack when the ALU is executing a command. And because of that, I have this series of five end gates, and they are gating that clock enable signal. So even if I have the command enabling the, the write enable or clock enable in my case, it still will be disabled because it's not the stack time. That's why all those signals are passed through the five end gates. And another one change, which is not in a logical design. My logical design assumes that the write enable input is the active high. So when it's one, the write is enabled. In case of my physical registers, it's active low. So when it's low, the write is enabled. Because of that, I'm putting inverters on the output of ends. I understand that probably the better way will be to redesign the control logic and generate the proper signals. But I just don't want to do that because I cannot test it in a logic sim and this could be complicated to actually test it and find the bugs. It will make things more complicated during the PCB design, but still additionally, some of the control signals are inverted because I have a lot of situations like X register needs to be written all the time, except let's say one operation. So it's easier to or all of those operations and then negate it. Like for all the situation it's written, except for this one with the negation. And after that, when, when, you, when I have it completely done, I just connect it everywhere. So it goes to the multiplexers, it goes to the clock enable inputs and so on and so forth. And in this moment I realized that, okay, I'm not definitely using the connection between the T 
register output and the X in, so I decided to drop it. So I decided to drop it in logical design, tested it with the logical design, and then just removed from the electrical design, making it a little bit simpler. And this is it. I expect that my LDO PCBs will arrive two or three weeks after the release of this video. So I think that next video, I really hope so, will be the LDO assembly and testing. And meanwhile, I will be working on another one project, which is more like a tutorial project. So join my streams and see you in the next video.